now we see you. So, okay. so Puya uh, will present uh, the abstract paper about automated recovery of issue commit links, leveraging both textual and non-textual data. So please, Puya, the stage is yours. Uh, thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Puyar Rostami. I'm a new PhD student at a software engineering lab in Yumons. Uh, this is my presentation of automated recovery of issue commit links, leveraging both textual and non-textual data. This work is actually uh, submitted and accepted by XSME 2021, and my co-author is Malihe Izadi. Uh, under the supervision of Abbas Haydar Nuri, we did this work together. Uh, uh, go to the main part. Uh, there are some main questions that we need to answer first to start this uh, study. Uh, what are the benefits of recovered links? Uh, first thing first, uh, we need to have uh, this kind of uh, links uh, to a study for software evolution. For example, uh, you need a different kind of information to study uh, to find uh, what's the impact of a uh, person in the project. For example, if uh, co the code they're committing is creating problem, uh, which person is uh, usually uh, more, um, um, uh, does the most of the jobs in the projects and uh, also finding uh, where the bugs could be in the projects. Uh, these kind of studies need to have uh, the commit and issue link together. But uh, this problem uh, comes from that uh, not much of the issue and commits are linked together. In 2019, one uh, study mentions that uh, from half a million issue from uh, GitHub, only 42% of these issues were linked to their corresponded commits. But uh, how can we properly recover these links? Uh, well, uh, each of issue and commits have different uh, artifacts that we can use and, uh, in order to find the correlation and connection between these uh, issue and commits that uh, in this study, we are going uh, in depth for them. Uh, as you can see, uh, the motivation here is that uh, there is not only um, uh, information like, for example, uh, issue number uh, for us to use, but uh, we have many different textual and uh, non-textual information. For example, you have the type priority, status, um, fixed version, uh, name of assignee, reporter, uh, and the different dates. And also for commits, we have the author committed, the person that uh, committed this commit, uh, the hash information and the file changes, uh, code changes that related to that commit. So uh, we can uh, use all of this information in order to find this connection if uh, in the commit and issue is not correct, uh, correctly uh, connected to each other. But what is the existing approach uh, before our studies? Uh, there are three types of uh, studies in this, uh, for this work. Uh, they are heuristic-based, machine learning-based, and deep learning-based. Uh, heuristic-based, that is uh, the older one, uh, starts with RELink. Uh, the RELink wasn't a tool to help you recover the issue and commits. It was uh, the tool that, uh, uh, not an automated tool, but it was a tool that a developer can use to find uh, the commit that is related to issue and help them uh, to do this manually. But the M-Link starts to do this thing uh, automatically. It's a, uh, the M-Link was a multi-layered approach that um, in each approach, uh, there was a heuristic and try to find the connection between issue and commits based on this heurist uh, heuristic. Polymod was the first one that uh, tried to talk about, for example, uh, that uh, each issue uh, can be related to more than one commit because uh, uh, we have the issues that are big enough to have multiple commits to cover them uh, fully. Uh, around 2015, uh, there were uh, the first machine learning based algorithms that come to uh, automatically connect these issue and commits. Uh, the RC linker was the first one that uh, Low uh, uh, worked on it. Uh, they 
used uh, additional information um, beside the information uh, you can find from each one commits uh, mainly named as re rich contextual information and uh, give this information to a simple classifier to find the connection between issue and commit. FR link and PU link was the two works that uh, published in 2017 by almost the same team. Um, there are uh, good uh, methods that try to uh, recover this uh, connection between issue and commits uh, by adding, uh, for example, file relevance. And for PU link specifically, try to use uh, positive links and unlabeled links um, instead of using positive and uh, negative links that you usually need for your um, uh, classifier. Later in 2019, there are two wor different works named uh, DeepLink. One of them used the knowledge graph based uh, information and uh, combine it in with deep learning method. And one, uh, the other one using only deep learning methods, uh, uh, mainly using NLP information to connect these uh, commit and issues. But uh, what was the problem with these approaches? First is that uh, some of them try to only keep the recall high. Some of them try to uh, keep the precision uh, high. But uh, personally, we believe that uh, both of pre precision and recall should be high. So in uh, our study, we used F F1 measure uh, to, uh, to measure our work. And other thing is that uh, in most of the works, they are usually concentrated on one-to-one -one relations, but we try to create one-to-one -one and one-to-many relation for our classifier. Uh, so our classifier would be able to relate all of these uh, commit and issues. And uh, the way that we use um, is using uh, less computational power than a deep learning model that uh, we mentioned in 2019. The approach is that uh, we uh, start with crawling our data, and after the, we gathering the issue and commits, we create true link and false link. True link are the issue and commits that uh, actually are related to each other, and false link is for sake of our classifier, creating uh, uh, so we can teach this classifier. Uh, also, we do textual data pre-processing in this part. After that, uh, we go in the feature engineering part. Uh, in this uh, part, we have two separated feature engineering, one for textual and one for non-textual. And uh, in, in last uh, step, uh, we have our models. We give this uh, issue commit pairs to our textual and non-textual uh, classifier. and Lastly, we use linear accumulator uh, hypertuning to combine this uh, model in out uh, output and uh, create the finalized uh, output of um, that we want. The data set that we use is uh, 20 mat that uh, was published in MSR 2020. Uh, they have 20 years of information of Apache. And uh, we use this and extracted uh, 12 specific projects from this data. Uh, also, since they don't have the um, uh, commit information, like, uh, for example, the code changes, we had to add these code changes and get it ourselves to add uh, to this data set for our use. And uh, next, we do some pre-processing on textual part, uh, like tokenizing, removing the stop boards, and stemming. And to extract the feature from this text, uh, we use TFIDF method. The information for our textual in, uh, data is summary and description of issue and message and diff code of commits. For our non-textual features, uh, first we had to find a strongly correlated columns. Uh, so we search for it and find out that reporter and creator of issues are usually the same person. Uh, so we omitted one of the, these columns. And uh, last, uh, uh, after that, we tried to reduce the different category data that we have. A status uh, of a status and type of the issue should be reduced uh, to three ones to 
make a better classifier. And lastly, when uh, the, the work on these steps uh, was done, we did one hot encoding. The final uh, information that we used for each is created date, updated date, creator key, status, and type. And for commit is outer, outer date, commit date, outer, and committer. For textual method, uh, we use uh, different models and uh, realize that gradient boosting uh, is the best one that uh, we can use. Uh, it's a uh, somehow we can mention that gradient boosting is a better version of a uh, decision tree, but somehow, uh, and we use this gradient boosting for our textual method. For our non-textual method, since uh, it was the new work, uh, all of the older ones use textual method, we decided to go with ensemble models. Uh, this is because that uh, using more than one model uh, can create um, improve your performance, but you should be careful that um, having uh, many more uh, models ensembled to each other can also reduce the performance by creating so much uh, wrong answers. So we had to find the uh, best um, combination. And we, we realized that uh, gradient boosting and XGBoost uh, would work best in our uh, situation. Last step after uh, having these uh, models um, that uh, create their output based on uh, textual information and non-textual information, we need to combine it. Uh, in this work, we combine it um, ourselves to, uh, by trying to find the best uh, combination amount uh, and uh, to do the, uh, the the reason behind this is that uh, some projects you uh, may have textual information better textual information and some projects may have better non-textual uh, information so it could be different for each project uh, and as you can see the uh, the combine the combination uh, is different for each of these 12 projects that we have here and uh, in this slide you can see uh, the performance of uh, our method hybrid linker uh, versus deep link and fr link which is uh, two of the most um, important works uh, in this matter uh, our work uh, is uh, better than uh, Others, uh, except in recall for FRLink, uh, that the reason behind this uh, problem is that FRLink uh, only concentrated uh, on having high recall, uh, but uh, we try to have uh, recall and precision high at the same moment. The pros is that uh, we require fewer computational resource. Uh, we need less time to uh, complete our work and uh, actually outperform the state of the art methods. And for future uh, work, uh, we are going to find some uh, new features to improve our uh, classifiers with it. Uh, we are uh, going to find uh, different architectures which may uh, work better and uh, combine the weight automatically with machine uh, learning methods and increase the number of projects for a study uh, because uh, right now we only have the study on 12 projects thank you all for your attention any question thanks thanks Buya, for uh, for welcome. your presentation yeah we are actually five minutes for uh, any question so i see on question by by Dario so um, he asked in the simple methods you should double check how the F measure is computed I see 100% recall and 90% and 9% precision so the F measure should be close to 100% so I think that he referred to the table where, where you um, of the simple method yeah, actually, it's more a comment than uh, than a yes, comment. Yeah. So in um, yeah, this here one? just double check. Yeah, double check the results. Eh? Because if you have one hundred percent recall and ninety eight percent precision, the F measure should be ninety eight ish. So uh, just double yeah, check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the thing is that uh, this information is uh, from the 
uh, the actual one that we are using is the F measure, uh, but uh, the information is, uh, I just forget the name of the library. Uh, the library uh, try to give us the maximum on uh, different iteration for recall precision and F measure with each other. So I, uh, I couldn't find any other way. Uh, so uh, when you try to reproduce the information, you wouldn't be lost in that. Uh, but what we try to find uh, more importantly is uh, F measure. So we try to concentrate on F measure, but you're right. Uh, these numbers don't go together. But, but so, basically, ah, so, so, so basically, you are yeah, saying that. Uh... I'm wondering, wondering what, I mean, we, we know actually, it's, you know, for, for, for the one person, which uh, rung uh, is clear. Uh, I'm sorry, I couldn't. Uh, yeah, we cannot hear you, Jim. Uh, maybe I yeah, can just let, let open me the something. Discord. So, can you hear please. me? Can you hear me now? Right now, yeah. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, somehow, yeah. So, we don't know how we, uh, when I see 100% call there uh, in the oh. table i know in the ground uh, where the uh, percent ah. yeah the quality is bad yeah yeah if you write it somewhere yeah yeah actually if you write it if you yeah, yeah. just write what you would like to see again uh, i can do it so basically what you are saying is that uh so uh, that uh, is like it's like the best uh, F measure, or it's the average F measure between uh, uh, the integration. No, uh, the the uh, the F me uh, the F measure, the precision, um, mm -hmm. uh, the the maximum. I the input of my models is the maximum of, uh, maximum of F measure of that model that is uh, learned based on it. Uh, but uh, the info output information of the library that I use uh, when uh, you use the simple form of that library and you want to have the, um, what do you call it? Uh, the overall performance of the model, the, usually it gives you the maximum of uh, recall and precisions. But uh, uh, this uh, this library is only for non-textual method, not uh, or textual method. So, uh, yeah. So how yes, can I... I yeah I understood the, your point. Thanks. Uh, a lot. Can you hear me now better? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I think okay. that there there is other comments. I think on the same uh, on the top. In the in the chat, um, I can go yeah, actually, the chat. yeah, I, yeah. But actually, I have, I have also a question. Um, when you show the um, the result for each project, uh, um, did you find any similarities between you know project that belong to the same ecosystem? For example, uh, I remember that Grovy or uh, um, Cassandra are you know, under the Apache project, are under Apache Foundation. I don't know if yeah. maybe you uh, did some qualitative analysis, uh, you know, not all, you know, numbers, but, you know, go, go beyond uh, the numbers and see and find some similarities. Uh, uh, unfortunately, there wasn't enough time for me because uh, it was uh, in my master uh, to conduct a qualitative study, uh, but uh, almost all of these projects uh, are in the uh, same ecosystem of Apache, so uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure I can't uh, say anything because I didn't do the study, so uh, I can't uh, say th anything for sure, so. Okay, but maybe it's maybe can be, you know, future work. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Uh, thank you so thank you so much, Huya. And yeah, You're you welcome. know, sorry guys for my problem. I really don't know what happened because my connection is good because I'm at the university and also I'm using Chrome browser. Okay. Uh, but yeah, this is the last session.
And then now there is the break of 10 minutes. And in 10 minutes, there will